So now we've had the clip properties, now it's time for the clip transitions. And the clip transitions is a similar thing as the clip properties, but these are telling the simulation how to transition between clips instead, and not the loops for the individual clips. For example, in our case we want to have a transition that takes us from the idle to the idle to walk clip, and then from the idle to walk clip to the walk clip. To create these, you need an agent clip transition graph. And I can connect this, and you can see that you have a lot of transitions through the visualizers in the viewport that draws a line for each transition. And we'll get all these without any effort as the default behavior is to automatically compute the transitions. So what it's doing is going through each clip, it looks at all the poses in the clips, and then it tries to see if it can match this with another clip. And it uses this tolerance here to see if uh, the match is close enough. If I do a spreadsheet, you can see that just like with the clip properties, you have a point for each instruction. And the instruction here are of course transitions. If I drag this tolerance slider up, then more transitions are created. You can see that here. But 0 0.3 is a good start, so let's go there. And let's look at these visualizers. So you can see we have these arrows, and that tells us what clips are transitioning between each other. So this walk one, for example, goes to this idle to walk one, and this walk two goes to this idle to walk two, and then we have like this spider web of clips transitioning to each other. Uh, in this case, we don't want to mix up the one clips with the two clips because they are mirrored versions, so the transition won't look that nice. Then we can use these filters here to make sure that we just get the transitions that we want. So I'm going to add four new ones here. I'm going to set the first one to aisle to one. I'm going to go to aisle to walk one. The next one is going to be aisle to walk one to walk one. And then we're going to go to aisle two to aisle to walk two and idle to walk two to walk two. Now you can see we lost a lot of the transitions and we don't have any overlaps between them. So now all the ones are transitioning between each other and the same for the twos, but they are not transitioning between each other. And that is good. Another option you have that was the only option before is that you set up manual transitions. So you have these extra transitions here. So you can either just turn this off and set them all up by yourself or you can just go down here and add to it. So you can go to, say I want to have alt one to alt walk one. I can turn on this show guide geometry so I can see what's going on here. So we have a sync frame for the clip A, we have a sync frame for clip B. And I find the best way to do this is that you find the frame that you want to transition from. So say we want to transition from frame 10. And then you sync that with the frame you want to transition over to. So I'm going to go, I'll maybe say here, let's say that. I want 11 to go to 17 with uh, three frames of blend. And then I use this transition region and I want to move that to these sync frames. So I'm going to set that to 11 to 14. And that means if a transition gets triggered, it has this little window to transition. So say that it's on frame one, then it will wait until the clip is on frame 11 and then it will transition. And say that the clip is on 15, then the whole clip has to loop and start from the beginning and then it will transition when it comes to 11 again. The reason my transition windows has only a few frames is that I want to have control over when the transition in the clip will happen. But I need more than one frame in case you're playing the clips faster than normal speed and therefore might skip the transition frame. And you can specify different windows. So you can have another one. Say you want a transition point at 16. And this, maybe this should be 12 on this one. Then you can have another one here that is 16. 18. So now we have two opportunities to transition. And as we have this transition already, you can see it adds these sync points to this clip. So we have multiple transition regions and multiple sync points. So I'm going to clear this out. We're just going to use the automatic transitions in this case. And you probably want to try out your transitions before your simulation. And then you can use this node, which is test simulation crowd transition. So you connect the agent to the first port, 
the transition graph to the second and then the third one if is if you have an environment and you want to check foot adaptation and then the fourth one is for clip properties if you want to try out the loops and you can just connect these let's see what we we'll get so let's start with idle one and go to walk one and this is a very neat thing with transitions so we don't actually have a transition between idle one and walk one but you're clever enough to find a path to it so it will say okay i want to go to walk one the closest path is go through idle to walk one then i'm going to do that and i'm going to go to walk one so you don't have to transition first this transition and then that one you, it would automatically do both if you tell it to go from idle one to walk one so let's see that we can set it the trigger frame is 10 so on frame 10 it will trigger so we start playing and you see it turns orange that means that it's been triggered here but it haven't actually transitioned uh, but if we continue play we're going to see it starts walking and then it turns green that means that that transition is complete and you can also see if i would set this to walk to then it will just stay orange forever and this is because we specified with our filters that the idols underscore one can only transition to other underscore one clips and underscore two clips can only transition to other underscore two clips. Right, 